Hi, this is Randy Stone. I cover the night beat for the Chicago Star. Stories start in many different ways. This one began with the pursuit of a dream and ended with the death of a nightmare. Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. It was one of those quiet, dull nights with the fog rolling in from Lake Michigan and nothing apparently happening anywhere. I cruised the city from the Gold Coast to the river, haunted Ricardo's bar for a while, and later prowled the tougher sections of town. Nothing, nothing at all. By the time I landed at Queenie's Bebop Club over on the south side, I was getting dark circles under my disposition. My train of thought was a string of empties going nowhere. Queenie's place is a tired little bistro with bad food and a hungry floor show. Queenie herself looks like the poor man's Lillian Russell, and sometimes she joins the show to give out with a song. I suppose it's the only way she could get a booking, by owning the joint. Maybe she had a voice once. I can't remember that far back. However, she has a good memory with a tongue hanging square in the middle of it, which makes her good for a story now and then. When she saw me, she ambled over to my table. Hiya, Randy. Long time no see. Hello, Queenie. Sit down, rest your bustle. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> How's the newspaper business these days? Tonight's as dull as it ever gets. Queenie. Well, cheer up, dear. Something terrible is bound to happen. I got faith in human nature. <laughs> what about you? Know anything exciting? Not much. I'm getting married. Again? Ah, those others were just a preliminary. This is the main event, huh? How do you like the diamond he gave me? Some rock, huh? Hmm. Looks like a stepping stone to success. Congratulations. Oh, you're welcome. Sam's from Texas, Randy, a regular oil typhoon. No kidding. A typhoon. You weren't swept off your feet. You were blown off. He had a ranch down there that was a dust bowl. No water, no nothing. And then one day... Yeah, well, wait a minute, Queen. Yeah, hmm? wait a minute. What? That man who just walked in over there by the bar. What about him? He's been hurt. That's blood on his forehead. Been in a fight. If he's not bringing any trouble in with him. He looks like he's dazed, like maybe he's out on his feet. Ah, those punchy fighters. They get knocked out and they ain't got brains enough to lie down. You know him? No, never seen him. Hey, wait a minute. He's a cop. A plain clothes dick. You sure? I ought to be. He raided my place once, two, three years ago. What the dickens does he want? He's got nothing on me. Easy, easy. I don't think he's here on business. Something's happened to him. So I'm crying. I think he's been slugged. Either that or he... Hey, where'd he go? In again, out again. Who cares? There was something about him, like he was walking in his sleep. Oh, sit down, Randy. Now talk to me. I haven't seen you since... I'm sorry, Queenie. I'll be back later. I went out into the street and looked up and down. The fog swirled about the street lamp on the corner like ghosts on a toot. And like a ghost, my boy had disappeared. He vanished as though he were somebody I'd seen in a dream. Then I heard a car starting up a little way down the block. It was parked at the curb, and I recognized it at once because I'd parked it there myself. It was my car. Hey, come back here. Hey! Well, I'll be a... Hey, taxi, cab! Right here. Follow that car. Don't lose it. Hurry. What's up, Car thief. You got my car. I'm a shaker. Cutting down that side street. Not much chance of us attracting any cops around here. Can't you go any faster? Take it easy, mister. We're closing in. We don't lose them first. Not a chance. Yeah, we're getting closer. Crowd him to the curb. Oh, murder. He hit a lamp. That stopped him. Just click the fender. Let me out of here before he gets going again. All right, all right. Get out and don't try any... What? You. It was the guy with the blood on his face, the one I'd followed out of Queenie's place. The fellow, she said, was a plain-clothes cop. He sat there, both hands still on the wheel, turned his head slowly to stare at me. What's the big idea? She'll die. I'll go get a cop, man. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Who'll die? Got to get to her before she dies. Who? Can't let her die. I'll be a murderer. Who, man? Who is it? I can't remember. You can't remember? I killed her. 
I killed Wait a minute, him. wait a minute now. Just take it easy. What's the matter? Is he hurt? Yeah, but not from this. we got to find her. She'll die. She hasn't got a chance. Who? Who'll die? My wife. My wife. i got to get you. Now, look. I tell you, she's dying. Got to get her out of there. Out of where? I'm trying to think. Out of a fruit cake. I'll get a cop. He is a cop. What? Look, fella, what happened? Can't you remember? What did you do? What was it? Where did it happen? Think. I've been trying hours. Walking the streets. That cab. Got to use it. Let me use it, please. Okay, get in. Maybe, maybe we drive around. I'll remember. I, I got to. Where to? Head for the nearest place where there's a phone. <laughs> They say that a clear conscience and a poor memory usually go together, but in this case, it was the other way around. This poor devil was tortured by a guilt he couldn't remember. The very fact that he couldn't seem to sharpen it and make it worse. He stared at me, his fist clenched, burning in a private hell of blind remorse. Well, if he were a cop, it wouldn't be hard to find out who he was. We pulled up in front of a drugstore, and I asked if he didn't remember being a detective. Now, after all, you wouldn't forget being on the force, would you? Detective... Yes, that's right. I am city police. What detail? Promoted to burglary, nineteen forty-seven. Let me see your badge. A badge? Yeah, inside your coat. What's the number on it? I haven't any badge. Well, you must have an identity card. Let's see your wallet. Wallet? Yeah, get it out, huh? As far as I have one, yes. Here. All right, empty it. Your pockets too. Yes. Seven bucks. Some change, a book of matches, nothing with any interest on it. <laughs> An IOU for three hundred dollars, signed Hollis Rogers. That mean anything to you? Nothing. Huh? This all? Did you look in all your pockets? Yeah, all of them. No card here. Nothing. A cop would carry an identity card. I, 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 I had one. It's. I think it was a million years ago. Next. Look. I, I've got to get to her, I tell you. I... Well, you can if you don't know where she is. Stay here. I'll be right back. Stick with him, cabbie. Make it snappy, pal. This heck ain't no padded cell. I found a phone booth in the drugstore and called police headquarters. I got through to Sergeant Kalski and told him my problem. Yeah, yeah. Blue eyes. Sandy hair about 28, 5, 11. Okay, okay. So that could be practically six dozen guys around here. I'm surprised that you... Don't let the nuts sell your bill of goods like that. All right, now, hold your horses, Kalski. You can check and find out what men were put in the plain clothes and assigned to burglary detail back in 1947, can't you? Don't waste of my time, Stone. The guy's a psycho just because he... Now, wait a minute, Kalski. Before... You were in burglary in 47. Yeah. I'm sure if you saw the guy, you'd recognize him. He's got uh, kind of a scar over his left eyebrow. That mean anything to you? A scar? Well, describe it. Well, it's curved about uh, an inch and a half across. Sort of like a new moon. Kenny Day? Kenny Day? He yeah. fit the rest of the description? Yeah, he did. What do you mean, did? Why past tense? Because he's past history, Randy. Kenny Day resigned from the force two years ago. Oh. Study law on the side, as I recall. One of those ambitious punks. You got his address? I can look it up in the file. Uh, will you? I'd sure appreciate it. Okay, but... Look, Stone, one thing. This guy you think might be Day, the guy who says his wife's in danger? Yeah. Kenny Day wasn't married. He didn't have any wife. Okay, so he resigned in 1948. In two years, a wife could happen to anyone. Kalski gave me Day's address. I called the garage, told him where to pick up my car, and then I went back to the street. The cabbie and the ex-cop were standing beside the cab, the cabbie with his arm around the young fellow's well, shoulder, his mouth relax, close to his ear. Doc, if you don't put over your troubles, maybe they won't hang. Well, what's keeping him? I... Hiya, oh. Kenny. <laughs> Did you find out anything? So your name is Kenny. Kenny Day. Wait, 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 of course. Yes, yes. That's my name, Day. Kenneth Day. And you live at 1626 West Adams. Yes, 1626 West Adams. There's where I live. My wife's there. I've got to get her quick.
This it, you remember? Yeah. Yeah, th- this is it. This is where I live. All right, come on. Let's go up. What floor are you on? Floor? Which is your mailbox? I don't see your name. A... There, there's my box. This? The name on it isn't yours. It's Joe Tenetti. I don't get it. That is my box. Well, we'll soon find out. It's the second floor back. Come on. We ran up the dim-lit stairway and through a hall filled with the warm, moist smell of cooking. And another odor, sharper, heavier, unpleasant. Wait. What is it? Something. Something's burning. Sounds like somebody left something on the stove. No. She's in there. Burning. Easy, easy. Someone's coming. What's the matter with you? Uh, who are you? Hi. I'm Mrs. Tunetti. What's the matter? You crazy? You bang on my door? I I live here. Huh? What you say? Am. I call a cop. Get out of my house. What you want? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. It's burning. Easy, Ken. My wife, you only see burn. So what? You crazy? I'll go my way. No! No, you don't come in. You drunk. Help! Kenny, there must be some mistake. Get out! Get out! Oh, she's in there. I've got to get her out. I tell you, I've got to get her out. I've killed my wife. NBC is bringing you Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy as Randy Stone. Here's a note about another NBC chime favorite returning to the air tonight. He's Chester A. Riley, alias William Bendix. Riley returns to the air to live the life of Riley just 30 minutes after Nightbeat. Listen for Mom, Babs, Junior, and Digger O'Dell, the friendly undertaker. Tonight you'll hear an amusing episode during which Riley becomes embroiled in a radio broadcast from his own home. Stay tuned here after Nightbeat for Confidentially Yours, Jack Late. And then hear The Life of Riley on most NBC stations. The chimes are your invitation. And now back to Night Beat and Randy Stone. If I could believe Kenny Day, somewhere in this city his wife was in mortal danger and he was responsible. Dazed and confused, the ex-cop couldn't remember how it happened. All he knew was if we didn't find her in time, he'd be a murderer. Through the police department, I finally discovered his address. Only when we got there, someone else was living there. We went down to the basement flat and talked to the superintendent. Now, look, Mr. The that he's been living in that second-floor apartment when I become superintendent here over a year ago. What are you trying to pull, anyway? All right, now, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Just how long have the Tonettis been living here, anyway? About two years. What are you doing, taking the census? Who lived in their apartment before they did how do I know I wasn't here? Now, scram. Nice guy. Friend, I know my wife's up there. Oh, wait a minute, Kenny. Now, listen. This is where you lived two years ago. That we know. But have you been living there ever since? Do we know that? Where else? Well, you tell me. Maybe you moved. Isn't it possible? I don't know. It didn't occur to me. Maybe I did. You studied law, you got married, you moved to a better neighborhood, which means you had a fairly good job. Practicing law, maybe. You got your degree, didn't you? I don't know. Well, at least you should be listed in the phone book. We stopped at a cigar store on the corner, went in, put our heads together over the phone book. No lawyers under that name, but there were lots of dates. Can it... J. Day. Here's one for Kenneth M. Kenneth S. Which one is you? I'm not sure. All right, call them up, all of them, and find out. Yeah. Yes, of course. No dice, huh? No. I kept expecting to hear Ann's voice, and yet all the time I... I know I wouldn't. She is back there at the apartment. I know she is. Why are you so sure? That that smell of burning. What about it? I, I don't know. I, I'm going back there. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me call my office first. What for? The city directory. I'll have them check that. 
I called the star, and the librarian found a Kenneth A. Day, all right. But the only address given was the Adams Street one we'd already been to. As a detective, the only thing I was running down was my heels. Then as I left the booth, I remembered that IOU in Kenny Day's wallet and that signature, Hollis Rogers. Called the office again and had it checked. Hollis Rogers wasn't even listed. We went back out to the street and I reached for a cigarette. Then another thought occurred. Hey, you had some matches. Randy, Randy, the time. It may already be too late. Listen to me. Doc. We've got to get back. She's in that house. I Will tell you listen you she... to me? Or maybe it doesn't mean anything. Probably doesn't, but that book of matches you had in your wallet. It looked full, new. Matches? Let's see it. Yes, of course, but I... All right, let's have it. Yeah. Oh, came from the Cafe Petite. Think you got him there? I, I don't know. It's, it's a little joint on Clark Street. Let's get back in the cab. Maybe you'll remember when you see it. Where to now, mister? Cafe Petite. <laughs> Well, this place mean anything to you? No. Nothing. Looks like you've blacked out on anything since 1948 except one thing. You married a girl named Ann. Come on, maybe the bartender's seen you before. Ah, in the chest. Well, it be. Hi, Mr. Stone. Hello, Mike. Hello. I got a problem. No dough. Oh, that's (laughs) okay. I'll put you on the cuff for a No, no, no. It's not that. It's not that. You ever see this gentleman before? Uh, Him? (laughs) <laughs> Are you kidding? Have you? You mean you have seen me? Oh, as often as most of my other customers. Hey, what's your gag? It's no gag, Mike. He just doesn't remember. You know where he lives? Ah, how would I know where he lives? Oh, what'll I do, Randy? What'll I do? I... Hey, what is this? What's the matter? I figured you were celebrating the arrival. Huh? Arrival? What arrival? Well, I, I just thought, well, his wife... What are you uh... talking about? What about his wife? Oh, now, look, maybe it wasn't his wife, I... I just didn't know, see, when he was in here yesterday having lunch with that lady, I figured she was his wife because, uh, well, I, I could see she was going to have a baby pretty the soon. Baby. And Anne. You remember? Where is she, Kenny? Where is she? That apartment. She must be in that apartment. It was burning. Think, Kenny, think. That was two years ago. You don't live there anymore. Well, Andy, I tell you, it's happening now. It's happening now. She's helpless. I tell you. Get a she's... grip on yourself. It's no good going to but... pieces like that. Well, she was about to have a baby. You remember that, don't you? Yeah, yes, I, I remember now. Anne, I can't think. I'm afraid, Randy, I'm afraid. Come on, easy, She's... easy, relax. She... Now you're shaking. Hey, what is with him? There's only one clue left, that I.O.U. Who is Hollis Rogers? Try to think, Ken. Hollis Rogers. No, no I don't remember. Hollis Rogers. Why would you lend him $300? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I never heard of him. Randy. Say, I, I know a guy named Hollis. What? Hollis Rogers? Well, I don't know about the Rogers part. Anyway, the clerk at the Acropolis Hotel calls him Hollis, if that means anything. Acropolis Hotel. He worked there? Yeah, hot stick. Uh, all right, come on, Kenny. We might as well check it. We've got nothing else to go on. <laughs> The Acropolis Hotel sported a grimy, worn-out elegance and included a big front window looking out on South State. The lobby was practically deserted except for a bulky character in a wrinkled suit fast asleep in the armchair. Hey, hey. What? Oh. Best clerk going out, huh? Okay, I'll register you, Jack. No, 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 no. We didn't come here for rooms. Huh? Is there a house detective here named Hollis Rogers? Yeah, there is. Me. Why? Yeah. Of course. Hollis Rogers. Huh? Well, Kenny! I'll be a monkey's uncle. I didn't even see you. Why, Kenny Day! I uh, almost didn't recognize you. You remember him then? Well, he ought to. We were in the force together, him and me. Prowl car 962. That was us. Hey, let me look at you. Well, well, been a long time, huh, kid? Y- yes, a long time. Yeah, I just got back from Colorado last month. Hey, how are things going with you? You was about to leave the force, weren't you, just after I resigned? Yeah. Mr. Rogers, you mean you haven't seen Kenny since then? No. 
I've been working out in Denver. I just got back. Oh, uh, Hollis, this is a friend of mine, Randy Stone. Yeah, pleased to meet you. How are you? Uh, Hollis, what I came here to talk to you about... Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, uh, the dough I owe you. You know, I'd have paid it back a long time ago. Kid, no, no, but I... no, no, it isn't that. Did Kenny ever write you telling you where he was living or the name of the firm that he was with? Huh? No. Why don't you ask him? Hollis, uh, remember the name of the law firm I went with? Heck, no, I don't remember the name. All I remember is that you wrote me once you hoped someday to get your name tacked on to the end of it. Hey, what's the matter, kid? Nothing. Thanks. Thanks, anyway. Ah, what you need is a drink. No, no, no. Ah, I'll help you forget your troubles. I got some right... Come on, Kenny, let's go. From the color of Hollis Rogers' nose, I imagine the only thing drink made him forget was when to stop. We went out into the street and got into the cab. Our fund of information had increased measurably. I know now that Kenny Day and his wife were seen having lunch at the Cafe Petite yesterday, which meant what whatever happened took place between then and early this evening. Listen. What? Oh, you mean the fire engine? It's coming this way. My house, it's burning. Randy, it's burning. And steady. She's inside. She's in the house. She'll die. Oh, start up for God's sake. Follow that engine. Wait, Kenny. Now. He ain't chasing no fires. Not in my You've care. got to. I've got to get you. Now, get a please. grip on yourself. You don't know where that engine's going. It could be any place. It's my house, I tell you. Let go of Listen me. to me now. We'll be flagged down by a motorcycle cop inside of ten blocks. You said it. And anyway, it's gone now. So, that's what happened, huh? A fire. Yes. I saw the flames. She was inside. Anne was inside. Burning. Burning. All right, easy, easy now. Couldn't have happened very long ago, maybe inside the past 24 hours. We can find out where it was. Get us over to fire department headquarters quick. We're practically there. You mean uh, you don't remember where you live? Uh, I just can't. But you know your name. What about the phone book? Oh, we've already gone through all that, Chief. It could be he just moved, or maybe the phone company hasn't installed a phone in his house yet. All he remembers is that it was on fire and that his wife was in danger. Day, hmm? Yes, Kenneth A. Day. If there was a fire connected with that name, it would have been reported within the past 30 hours at the outside. I'll check. It'll be in this box on my desk. Thank you. There would normally be about 40 fires reported in that time. Day, hmm? That's right. You own the property, Mr. Day. I, I, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. Now, of course, if there were any casualties, the names would be listed. And, uh, Day. Yeah, here, here we are. Fire reported at 6.10 p.m. Where? 2845 Hemlock Drive. Yes, that's it. My, my wife. Oh, I'm sorry, but the full report hasn't been filed yet from the district station. Fire was only reported a few hours ago. The 2800 block of Hemlock Drive was a neat parade of white stucco bungalows way over on the northwest side. Wasn't hard to find number 2845 because 2845 was merely a gap in the moonlit row of houses, a gap as conspicuous as a missing front tooth littered with the charred remains of what had once been Kenny Day's home. Burned right down to the ground. Nothing. There's nothing. There's nobody. Even the street. Nobody on the street. Nobody. Steady, Kenny, steady. There's a light in the house across the way. Let's try to find out what just did happen, huh? And... And she was in there. Kenny, there's no use standing here. She... She phoned me. She wanted to come downtown. She wanted to have one last evening out. Just the two of us. I... I said she couldn't... I made her stay home. I didn't want her to come downtown. I was afraid maybe if I hadn't made a stage, she 
keep me alive now. Yeah, I killed her. Kenny. <laughs> Kenny, it wasn't your fault. You were thinking only of her welfare. Here comes a cop, Randy. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? It's all right, officer. That, that used to be this man's house. Huh? Oh, why, hello, Mr. Day. I didn't recognize you in the dark. Too bad you're losing your house, especially with the baby coming. Or should I be congratulating you now? What are you, what are you trying to say? Wait a minute, wait a minute. You were here during the fire? Uh, yes. What do you mean? Should you be congratulating me? What happened? Tell me. Why, you what? Say, didn't you go to the hospital? Hospital? What hospital? Good grief, man. When we couldn't find you, we thought you'd come to and headed for the hospital during the excitement of putting out the fire. The fire? Yes. I came home, and it was burning, and I tried to get Anna out. They wouldn't let me. They tried to hold me back. I... Yes, and he'd have burned to death, too, if one of the firemen hadn't given him a tap and knocked him out. We sent him on the lawn across the street. Well, what happened? My wife, they got her out? Why, sure. She headed for the hospital before you even arrived. I hope she made it because she was sure racing the stalk. What hospital? County. Thank you. Kenny, come on. Wake up. Let's see who won that race. <laughs> I don't know how many traffic laws our cabbie broke speeding back to the city, but they would probably have added up to a young fortune in fines. Finally, we skidded to a hall at County Hospital, piled out and invaded the place. The nurse at the desk checked with the maternity ward, and after some endless minutes, she hung up. Well? Mrs. Day gave birth to a boy, eight pounds, both doing fine. Boy. Well, well, well. What do you know? Uh, which one of you is the father? The father? Oh, oh him. Yeah, take a bow, pal. Can I see it? I guess you can. Right this way. He's still in a daze. And you'll be in a daze, too, when you see what my meter reads. You trying to spoil my evening? Ah, don't let it throw you, Doc. Charge it up to education. Travel broadens a guy, you know. Traveling with you does more than that. It flattens him. <laughs> ah, take it easy, Pops. And here. What's this? I think you would have saved a cigar. <laughs> Another night about to slip into sunrise and another edition about to go to press. Kenny Day's battle with his conscience is won and the curtain of his subconscious is lifted, as they say in the psychology books. Not that he really had anything to feel guilty about, of course, but conscience works in peculiar ways. To some people, it's as useless as a glass eye at a keyhole. It never keeps them from doing anything. It merely keeps them from enjoying it. <laughs> Yes. Copy, boy. Night Beat, starring Frank Lovejoy, is produced and directed by Warren Lewis. Tonight's story was written by Irvin Ashkenazi with music by Frank Worth. The part of day was played by Ted DeCorsia. Others in tonight's cast were Lorene Tuttle, Bill Tracy, Wilms Herbert, Jack Crucian, Barbara Dupar, and Eddie Fields. Frank Lovejoy may currently be seen in Milton Sperling's production, Three Secrets, released by Warner Brothers. Listen next week at this time and every week as Randy Stone searches through the city for the strange stories waiting for him in the darkness. Nightbeat came to you from Hollywood. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. Mystery fans will enjoy the Sunday lineup of action-packed adventure shows on NBC. Sunday tune for The Falcon, High Adventure, The Big Guy, Charlie Wilde, and $1,000 reward. Five thrill-filled shows packed with intrigue and mystery. Listen Sunday on NBC.